my name's Corbin Harris. I came through Professor Bam school when I was three, so I was about 17. Uh, I'm 21 now, I'm in the Air Force. Um, first day at the BAMs, I remember it. I was, uh, I was three years old, I was dressed up like a cowboy. I had uh, cowboy boots on, a cowboy hat. And me and my dad were at the pool swimming in the little corner there that had a bunch of people doing martial arts in it. And my dad was like, oh, we're gonna sign you up. And I remember I was crying and holding on to my dad and they were pulling me loose trying to get me to <laughs> take Kung Fu. Um, those are my first first memories of uh, the band. Um, as a, growing up with all the kids here, it was kind of like a second family, you know, like you come in here and everybody's friends with everybody. You're all trying to do the same thing, which is get better at, at your sport. And you're traveling across the country, competing and things like that. And it was just a real close knit whole family was involved. Uh, mom and dad were both black belts. Uh, it was neat. It was uh, it was neat to have everybody there together. You could go home and talk about, oh, this is what we did today. Well, I didn't understand that, and you could kind of work through it all together. If you, if, if you go through something real tough by yourself, you think, oh, well, I'm big and tough, you know. But then if your mom and your dad are right there doing the same thing you're doing, that helps. And also just having a common interest helps, especially when you're growing up. Uh, it, it's hard it to talk to. It was a trip seeing my, uh, seeing my dad go. He, he's a little more mild than my mom is, uh, but uh, I remember one time at a tournament, my mom was going, there was like three ladies over 40 that which she was competing in. And I just remember watching her and think, God almighty, she, she, she just went off on this one poor woman. And uh, yeah, that was, that was sort of weird, but uh, sort of funny at the same time to see your parents yeah, fighting yeah. other people. You don't want to, <laughs> you don't, you respect them more because you, if you're the only one going through it, like I said, you, you feel like you're special. But if you see your mom in there, and she's fighting, or your dad in there, and he's he's wrestling, you know, it definitely it definitely adds a little bit of respect to them. I fell in love with martial arts in general, because um, after I was done here at the school, I just had the ability to pick up a martial art. I'd never really done jujitsu before, but I could pick it up. Muay Thai, I'd never even really heard of Muay Thai, but I was just able to pick things up like that. And it's fascinating to add all of them together and see what you come up with, because every martial art has its own unique skill set that you can use. And that's just fascinating. Uh, black belt test, I don't remember how young I was, but I was pretty young. You know, you tell a kid my age that you can't have sugar, can't have nothing but water. He's got to wake up and run a couple of miles and do 500, you know, jumping jacks. And um, it was tough, man. It was tough. You know, all I wanted was some sugar. 90 days, uh, 90 days without those things. But uh, it definitely, especially later on, now that I'm doing what I'm doing now, it definitely gives you that edge of mental and physical toughness where you you know you can just do things. You can just suck it up. And uh, that was, yeah, that was, um, I had to write, if I remember, I had to write a pretty long thesis about, I can't even remember what it was about. I remember it took uh, it helped me, <clears throat> it helped me because as a kid I was, uh, 100 miles an hour in one direction and 100 miles an hour in the opposite direction. So to have me, like, have a set thing to do every day, alright, I gotta work out, I gotta work on my thesis, I gotta read these books, it definitely helped me sort of slow down and just focus on one thing at a time and get it done before I move on to the next thing. So that definitely. Uh, it, it was, it was, uh, in some respects it was easier, in some respects it was more difficult. It was more difficult because people were like, oh, well, he does martial arts. He doesn't do anything else besides that. You know, he's not on the lacrosse team with everybody else. But at the same token, it made it easier to, you know, I didn't have a problem being the outsider, I could I could become the insider because you know you you don't take things so personally. People will say, oh well, he's you know he does martial arts, he's weird. Nobody else does that, but it was no big deal for me because that's what I wanted to do. You know, and they're gonna either accept it or not, and uh, it definitely helped me uh, 
temper wise being able to avoid that's the one thing I, I took away the most from this place was just being able to avoid trouble um, as, to the best I, of my ability. You know, I never really had a problem with bullying because this pla being here taught you to sort of stand up for yourself and present yourself in a manner in which you're not a target for being bullied. You know, standing up, walking tall, you know, that sort of thing. I never had a problem with it. I always sort of, it might be cliche to say, but I always sort of stood up for the kids that were being bullied uh, just because I, I, not something I cared for and they're not going to be able to help themselves and some of these guys stand up. I think everybody has their own sort of uh, trait that they sort of battle. For me, it's always been and probably will always be my temper and being able to control it. And uh, that's something, when I was a little kid, I had filter on it it was just you know I just had to fit but now that I'm older and I, I sort of took away some of the things I learned from here to be able to just relax not sweat the small stuff and to control it you know instead of getting angry you just go do something else for a little bit you know just being able to control that that one thing that's your Achilles heel. Um, for me it was more of like a, a respect thing I always sort of, I don't know why, just the environment that you fostered, I always just sort of knew you knew what you were doing. And you might say, do this, and I'm like, oh man, that's gonna suck. But I just would do it just because I, I trusted him. You know, I never really questioned it because it always seemed to right now, work. I, I just got back from, um, I'm on leave, I'm in the Air Force, I'm a P sort of like Air Force Special Operations and it's been a, a year since I started that journey and it's been a long one and a tough one uh, and finally finally got back pretty excited about that getting ready to start training, training was basically uh, four months of how much can you suck up it was basically that's all it was was can you wake up every morning just suck it up for however long PT is going to be and just deal with it you know that's and some people can some people can't it was that's basically the best uh, way to describe when it comes to physical exercise and like not quitting it always comes back to have you been there before or have you been close to there before and being here training so hard for so many years you always have that little extra when you feel like oh my god I can't do this anymore you always have that little extra that you can dig down and and keep it. And the mental toughness just also really helps a lot. You know, there's, there's two types of people that make it through this type of training. And it's people that are too dumb to quit and the people with too much pride to quit. And, you know, I, after being through here and some of the things I've done in my life, yeah, I just had way too much pride to, 